Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Technically Something, the show where we talk about technology, creativity, tutorials, and gaming. I'm your host, Kevin Allen, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step process on how to make a movie poster in Photoshop. Now, I do understand that in the past, I have made movie posters like the Metal Gear Solid one, and that was just sort of a sped up version on how to do it. I had a, a few of my students, and I've had requests over time to have a more in-depth tutorial on how I create movie posters. If you're new to the channel, you can go to my Intro to Photoshop playlist and start from the beginning, because I'm gonna be using some of the uh, techniques that I cover in earlier videos. So if you're watching this and a lot of it just sounds like jargon that makes no sense, then jump back to those old videos and that will definitely help you get started in that regard. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Ah, another day, another Photoshop project. First thing we're gonna do is create a new file. So I'll go to File, New. From here, a window will pop up asking you all this stuff. I'm just gonna call my file Movie Poster. Um, and then from there, we have standard print sizes, so you could do US paper. And then it gives you a couple other options here, such as letter, legal, and tabloid. Um, just because I'm gonna make this a simple example, I'll leave the size up to you. I'm just gonna go with letter, which will be eight and a half by 11. Quick note on resolution. The bigger you go, the less resolution you need. So if I were to have a, say, 24 by 36 inch poster, which is your standard poster size, um, I would definitely, definitely make sure that your resolution is at 150 because that's kind of all you need. Um, now the smaller you get, like eight and a half by 11, um, it can look much better if you have 300 resolution, but if you're trying to work with a, a file that will move faster or if your computer isn't super fast, uh, don't have a lot of memory or a lot of processing power, the resolution, um, will definitely affect how fast you can work. So if 300 doesn't work, go with 150. For the color mode, I'm gonna stick with RGB and a white background. After you make your new file, um, you have to go on the internet and start finding pictures of the things that you want, your topics, your subjects, your images, whatever it may be. Um, in this case, I am doing a sort of like a reimagined version of uh, an 80s movie called uh, The Last Starfighter. And I found a picture, a model kit of the ship used in that movie. I'm gonna cut that out. Um, a few pictures of a guy um, to kind of take the place as our, our main character. And then the arcade cabinet that he plays that is sort of like a, a training simulator that aliens put on the earth. It, it is a corny movie, okay? I didn't say that it was a good movie, but I like it, so, so back off. All right, so next step. Now I'm gonna go through and cut these out. But instead of using the lasso tool like usual, I wanna make sure that you get exposure to a new technique, um, a new way of selecting stuff. So I'm gonna actually use the pen tool for this. And I'm gonna start off with the Gunstar ship. Okay, so first off, let's zoom in. And I just hit Z and then clicked on my, uh, so you can either click on the little spyglass over here or you can hit Z on your keyboard and then click in. Now selecting the pen tool or clicking P on the keyboard, I'm going to start at a point and then if I click hold and drag, I can create curves. And this allows you to get much nicer selections. But eventually, you're gonna run into a situation where you find a corner. So if I make this and then go to the top of the cockpit here, if I were to click up, you can see automatically when I click, it creates a curve. So to cancel that out, I hold Alt on my keyboard and click on the blue point or the last point that I made, and that cancels out the next curve so that I can create a new one. I'm gonna do that again. Hold Alt, click, and now I can go to the next point with a straight line. So this part, just because 
it's not 100% necessary for you to see me talk about every single point I make, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. Taking a little pause here, when you have gone around the entire exterior or uh, the perimeter of your shape um, and use the pen tool to select everything, um, you can go to your paths and hold control and click to turn your path into a selection. Again, I'm gonna hit control Z, but if you're on layers and you don't see paths anywhere, you can always go to your window and then select paths and then it'll pop up. Um, so again, hold control and then click on that thumbnail and that will make a selection. So now if we go back to our layers and on the gunship thing that I was just making all those uh, selections and pathways for, now that it's a selection, if I hit the mask icon, it masks out everything except for what I drew, which is exactly what I want. So this is one thing down. Now I'm gonna move on and do this to all of the other layers that I have. Well, except for the space background. I'm actually gonna put these layers up in front of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the guy, the arcade cabinet, and then the picture behind him, which is, well, this. So now that I have all of this stuff cut out, um, I'm gonna start making some effects changes and start kind of combining them together. And I may have to find another picture to fill in this white space here, um, but nothing impossible. So let's start with the horizon of this planet, um, which I'm gonna assume is Earth, or at least I'm gonna make it look like that. But I'm gonna drop the opacity of my guy looking up and this way, when I drop the opacity, I can see through and catch the horizon here. So this will allow me to grab my pen tool and I can actually draw a line that goes along that horizon. Go back over and then go to my paths, click by holding control. So now that I have this edged out, I can use my brush I'm gonna make sure it's a soft edged brush I just right click on the screen and select soft round edged brush I'm gonna make it fairly large um, and then the next important thing we're gonna do is select the mask and I'm going to fade out the edges of the top of his head so that it kind of fades in with the edge of the planet. Now I still have this edge over here, but that's okay. I can deselect, control D, and then just clear that out as well, and then bring him back up to full opacity. Um, next thing we will do is, I gotta find something to fill up this white space. Okay. So to fill in that gap, I just decided find another picture of Earth, and just so we have this cool white glow still, um, I'm actually going to use the soft brush to gradually fade out the edges here on the new globe that I put in, and kind of blend it with the other. I don't want to 
gonna go too crazy, so I'll leave it right around there. And now I'm gonna try and use a blending mode. So on the layer where I have my guy staring up, I'm gonna try and use a blending mode. And we'll see what a few of these look like. Kind of gets that double exposure look. I think I like... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with Lighten for now. I kind of want, I don't like this hard line of the mountains here. So the next thing I'll do is blend out the mask on that just a little bit. I'm gonna create a larger brush size, select the mask, make sure it's soft, and then kind of blend that out as well. And I, I can see that some of the white is starting to show up down here at the bottom. That's okay, because what I'm gonna do just above that layer is create a blank one. And I'm just gonna call this my color layer. And with my brush, I can actually use the eyedropper and select some colors. So I'm gonna get a dark color from here and just brush that in over the top. Actually, I want that to go over the guy too, so I'll put that a layer up. And that kind of blends it together a bit, but I'm still gonna work on the mask here. And it's just kind of a matter of switching between different brushes in order to blend out different modes, um, different layers until you get them where you like. I think the general setup is here now. Kind of like it. So the next thing I'm going to do is start adjusting these layers. So like for one, um, I want the foreground picture to be a little bit darker. So I can click on this layer. I'll call this foreground. And click on the adjustment layers down here. It's this little half circle icon. And now I can select any of these adjustments. Um, so I'm going to start with curves. And unfortunately, you'll see that if I change one thing about this, it seems to affect all of the layers beneath it. But if I wanted to only affect this layer, I can hold Alt on my keyboard, hover in between both until this icon pops up. And even if it doesn't pop up, you can still click. And this little arrow shows up showing that it's now connected to this layer. Now, for whatever reason, if you're if that's not working at all, you can always right click the layer and select create clipping mask. And that will do the same thing as well. So now curves is only affecting the layer that I selected. So I'm going to darken this up. So we get some of those and get that to be more of like a silhouette. And picture the guy here, I'm going to go in here and mess around with color balance but I only want it to affect this layer so I can right click create layer mask or clipping mask and now I'm gonna play with the colors to make him a bit more blue and mesh in with the background a bit more there we go that looks a little bit more unified and we'll go up to the arcade cabinets and do the same thing. I'm gonna try adding a color balance to that. Clipping mask on it and I'm just gonna make it a bit more blue. It's still not quite there, so I'm gonna add another adjustment of brightness and contrast. And let's take down the brightness and I can increase the contrast. Get it right about there. Okay. Much better. And then the gunship is the last thing that I'll add some adjustments to. Again, I think I'm going to try playing with levels this time. But it's doing the whole thing, so I will clipping mask it. Uh, I'm not going to make it too bright. There. Okay. So now all of the levels, colors, and everything is pretty much where I want it. Um, now I just have to 
make sure that the placement is exactly where I want it to be. And I think I'm actually gonna bring up everything just a little bit. So to move every single layer, I'm gonna click on the very top and then scroll to the very bottom just before the background and hold shift and then click. This will select every single layer in between. And then with my move tool, I can bring it all up. Okay, that should be just enough. Now, um, at the very top, I'll create a new layer, get my gradient tool, and I'm gonna change the gradient color. I gotta make sure that I do something that complements the whole thing. So I'm actually gonna make it a dark color. So I'm gonna take this color from the arcade cabinet and bring up the gradient there. It kinda matches a bit better that way, plus there's a little effect I could do um, now that I'm towards the end and I'm making the effects. Um, I'm going to go to my arcade cabinet, create a new layer above that, and make sure it isn't anchored or uh, clipping masked. So you can right click and you can say release clipping mask. And I'm gonna call this um, arcade glow. So this is where I'll use the lasso tool. And I'm just gonna draw a couple straight lines going out from the arcade cabinet. follow along the edge here and just like I did before with the gradient I'm gonna switch this to a radial instead of a linear gradient and grab that green I was talking about and that's pretty intense so I'm actually gonna drop the opacity of the gradient tool down to like 40 50 percent somewhere in there let's say that's about good I want it to be pretty subtle deselect and let's say I want to do it one more time so I'm gonna put another shape coming out but this time I'm gonna draw it coming out from these edges and have it follow along the same edge here and just use that gradient one more time And this gives it that sort of glow look to it, but I can also make it even better if I use a blending mode again. So I'll go up to blending mode and check what all these different ones do. I think I'm gonna go with linear dodge add. And since that's still pretty bright, I'm gonna drop the opacity just, just a little bit, about 75%. And since these lines are pretty sharp and light would never look that sharp coming out of an arcade cabinet, um, I can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and when this window pops up it's already generating a preview now so if I go way up you'll see that we lose those lines completely I still want to have them there just barely yeah like that okay so now we have the glow coming out of there and this is another big question that gets asked a lot is how do you bend trails or make motion and speed lines so I'm going to show that now with the ship so we have the Gunstar ship and the levels on top of it. I'm gonna group these together. So I click on one, hold shift and click the other, the levels. Hold control G and that'll group them together. I'll just call this Starship. And now I'm going to duplicate it. And you can either do that by dragging it to the plus or the new layer icon, or you can right click and select um, duplicate layer or group. Depends on if you're using uh, Photopia, Photoshop, but you can always duplicate it. And now I will merge the group and then hide my original OG, my original folder. I'll just hide that by turning off the eye. Okay. And on this, I'm going to go to filter, blur, motion blur. And the biggest thing here is we want to make sure that the motion blur matches the angle that the thing that we're trying to add motion to is going. So this actually looks pretty good. And then you want to really bump it up. And yeah, let's say about right here. So now if we bring the OG Starship back and then drag, and we'll just call this the MB for motion blur, and put this underneath it, you can now drag 
the blur behind the thing that you're trying to give motion to. Alternatively, you could always put the motion blur on top and mask it and use your brush to paint black on the mask and blur out, or rather mask out, um, whatever sections you don't want that blur to show up with. And then when it's kind of ready, you go to the blending modes and check and see if there's any blending modes that lend themselves well to that. And in this case, I think uh, it's gonna be between screen and, yeah, I'm going with linear dodge again. So now we have some speed lines coming off of this. Uh, now the very last thing that we'll need is I'm just going to call it Rocket Fire and paste it, but I'm going to paste it beneath my starship, rotate it, and make it a bit larger. And then um, we're going to mask out, so create a mask, get your brush mask out all the black background that we don't need and even if you don't get all of that black background out of there that's okay it's a little trick that we can do we can stretch out the fire a bit so we get more of those trails okay all right so with this I kind of want to change the color to blue, so I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Let's try hue and saturation. There we go. But again, <laughs> make sure that it's clipped to the layer beneath it. Much better. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Select both and group them. Just call this jet. And now I can just duplicate this group. <coughs> Put it under the next portion there and do it one more time i think for that portion over there and i mean if we really wanted to we could do it for the fourth engine i just don't think it's going to show up very much maybe it shows up enough so we'll put it there okay so when you have all four of these jet streams, we're gonna group all four groups. Just call it jets. And then, since I'm gonna do some effects to this, I'm gonna duplicate it and merge the group, then hide my old one. And I'll show you a little trick with making this not just a straight jet stream. We'll go to Edit, Transform, Warp. Now, Warp is pretty cool. It can be unruly at times, but you just basically drag certain portions around until you are able to warp everything just right. But as I said, it can get a little unruly. <laughs> so you have to be kind of careful with how, um, how you use it. Okay, I think that's at a good point, so I'll just hit enter. Um, you could also do the same thing with the motion blur. So now we have these straight lines coming off. So I'm just going to do the same trick with that. I'll go to transform warp and mess with the motion blur a little bit. Okay, once we get it to a spot that we like, let's hit enter. And I think that's a lot. So I'm actually going to drop that motion blur just a little bit. But I think that is just about right. So now it's all a matter of putting a title on this thing. Um, so let's add a title for this. Um, when you do start typing, you want to make sure that your text color is something that you can read and see. And I'm going to do caps lock and just do, actually, let's do the last. Enter star fighter. Okay. If you still can't see it, it could also have to do with where it is on your layers. So always bring your text to the very top. 
There we go. And I'm not crazy about the fonts, so I'm gonna go through and choose a different one. There we go, can't go wrong with some Trajan. All right, and bring this down a bit. And I also wanna shrink the top text, so I'll highlight it, open up my Characters tab, and if that's not there, you can always go to Windows and select Character. From here, I'm gonna go next to the font and grab this icon and just drag it to the left. I also want it to be a little bit higher, so you can mess with, oh, wrong one actually. Um, you can mess with the baseline. So bring it up a little bit. There are a few more tricks that I want to do to this. Um, so what I'm going to do is highlight all of it. And I'm now going to change the color to black. And then double click on this empty space on the right side of the actual layer. And this will open up the layer styles. So I'm going to give it a stroke. I'm going to kind of stick with the same palette that we've had so far. I think that should be good. All right. Um, last few things that we can do is maybe add a shape down here in the bottom. All right, so I think I have my title all set up, so I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna click and hold shift, and then select all these and group them, call it title. And now, just like before, I can duplicate it, rasterize it, and this is just a little effect I'm gonna add for my own picture because I wanna show some upward movement. Go to blur, do motion blur, and type in 90. And you can actually duplicate more than once to add more of an effect and then merge them together. And I'm gonna put it underneath my title. And now I'll just raise the title up a bit more make it look like it's at the top of all of those streaming lights and add a little linear dodge and maybe drop the opacity a bit. Okay. Um, last but not least, uh, if you want to kind of frame this, you could always use the shape tool again, change the stroke to black and then turn up the stroke and then just draw a square from corner to corner. And again, it's not exactly where you want, just thicken up the stroke a bit. So I'm gonna make sure that this is in front of the title on the layers, but I can take my starship and the jets and all of that and bring it above and now it looks like it's flying out of the picture. Um, and if you just want it to be the starship, you could always take your jets and put them behind the rectangle. And that way it looks like it's coming out of it. So a few little quick tricks, um, but that is a movie poster. So essentially we got our pictures. We uh, used the pen tool to cut out one, two, three, four things. Well, five if you count the earth. Um, then we masked them and use the soft brush to kind of blend them together. We also added uh, some adjustment layers and blending modes to really put everything together. And on the title, we used our layer styles to give this an outline. Um, we also used the motion blur and the warp transform to give some curves to them. And the lasso tool and the gradient tool to add some glows. So I hope that this was helpful kind of watching the whole process. 
If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe um, and get the updates as they come out. Um, this channel does a whole bunch of different stuff between um, Photoshop tutorials, tech tutorials, gameplay, um, and all sorts of geeky stuff. So if you're into that, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button if this helped you out. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm Kevin Allen, and this was Technically Something. See you guys later.